Greetings and welcome to another academic half day. The topic for this next series of lectures is going to be on the essentials for microbiology. These are the essential elements that you need to understand to approach medical microbiology and infectious disease. And although many of you have probably been exposed to this at some point in time in either your undergraduate uh, or in, um, in, your, uh, in, in medical school, uh, I want to make sure that we've covered the basics so that you have that foundational understanding of microbiology uh, so that when we talk about all of the different causes of infectious diseases, that you understand exactly what we're talking about. So now this academic half day is going to be broken up into a series of smaller parts, uh, mostly to uh, facilitate download for those of you who are watching this uh, online. And uh, in this uh, series, we're going to actually cover a wide variety of topics, starting with the um, uh, bacterial anatomy, uh, what, these, what these organisms actually look like and how they're structured, and then talk in more detail about the classification schemes that we use to identify them and then to, uh, and in order to allow us to direct treatments to, uh, at them. Finally, we will then uh, do a, a uh, romp through some of the medically important bacteria that you're going to encounter uh, frequently in your practice and uh, cover some of the uh, uh, characteristics of each one of these organisms as well as the uh, uh, uniqueness of these organisms and also the types of diseases that they can cause that you may uh, that you will come across uh, in practice. So today we're going to start with the essential anatomy of the bacterium in general and then focusing on specifically the characteristics of the cell wall. Bacteria are different from all other animal and plant cells in that they are prokaryotes, whereas the rest of us are all eukaryotes. The difference is simple. We have a nucleus that surrounds our genetic material, whereas bacteria as prokaryotes do not. The essential structure of a bacterium is essentially a large bag of cytoplasm with a single loop of double-stranded DNA contained within in a mixture of ribosomes that float free within the uh, cytoplasm, all surrounded by a complex peptidoglycan uh, cell wall as well as a plasma membrane, and then in certain circumstances also with a uh, capsule. Now, the one other thing that distinguishes them is that there is no other organelles, especially mitochondria, uh, within the bacterium. And embedded in the cell wall are also a number of different pili, which perform a variety of different uh, functions. The genetic material is uh, encapsulated in a single strand of DNA um, that's in a single loop, but there can also be uh, small portions of DNA uh, floating free within the cytoplasma, uh, and these are uh, uh, also circular, and they're called plasmids. The interior life of the uh, bacteria should be fairly straightforward. I mean, it is essentially just a, uh, a loop of DNA with a bunch of ribosomes and some enzymes all floating in this uh, cytoplasma. They're performing a variety of different biochemical and reproductive uh, functions. I'm not really going to get into any of the details about DNA replication, uh, especially in bacteria, as that's going to go a little bit more detailed than, than is really in entirely necessary. So really, as far as, uh, as that detail is concerned, you should largely be familiar with um, most of the basic biochemical processes of, uh, of all, well, all cells, almost all of them, including uh, the, the process of DNA replication, uh, protein synthesis, um, and also the uh, essentials of uh, en energy substrate. Bacteria, just like uh, eukaryotes, use the uh, glycolic pathways and the uh, citric acid cycle um, as one of their main energy uh, uh, producing pathways. And so I'm not really going to get into those kind of details here. Really, what I want to focus on 
is the structure of the cell wall because a lot of this relates not only to the classification of the organisms but also in how we identify them and then also how we treat them um, uh, when it comes to, uh, to dealing with them as an infecting agent. When we talk about the structure of the cell wall you need to appreciate that there is a part of the classification scheme that we use in microbiology uh, that we'll talk about in the next section um, but I just want to briefly touch on and that's the difference between a gram-positive and a gram-negative uh, bacteria. Now the gram stain is a specific type of uh, staining technique uh, that will um, allow us to classify organ uh, bacteria into two major categories those that take up a gram stain and those that uh, do not. Whether a a, an organism will take up a gram stain or not it depends on the actual structure of the outer surface of the bacteria. Regardless of what type of bacteria you're dealing with, the foundational uh, structure um, is the cell membrane. This is the interior most portion of the, of, of the cell membrane cell wall complex and is, uh, is a lipid uh, bilayer uh, similar in structure to uh, the cell membrane of all other cells uh, in, in the world. It is the osmotic barrier uh, between the cell and the environment and includes important functions such as uh, electron and ion transport, electron transport for energy production, acting as an insertion point for many different types of enzymes and solute and cell product transport. Surrounding the plasma membrane is the cell wall. The cell wall is a much more rigid structure and it has a, a number of functions uh, such as providing rigidity for the cell membrane and also prevents any mechanical or osmotic rupture from occurring uh, with any fluid or ion shifts. The cell wall also contains uh, a number of different uh, antigens as it's constructed of a repeating chain of peptidoglycans. Many of these antigens participate in bacterial virulence as well as host antibody interactions. The cell wall also has an important function as an anchoring base for uh, both pili and flagellum, which is important for transferring substances as well as transportation. Now it's the structure of the cell wall and the plasma membrane uh, complex that differs between what we consider gram-positive and gram-negative uh, bacilli. As you can see in these diagrams, the essential difference between these two types of complexes is both in the size of the peptidoglycan cell wall as well as the presence of an additional plasma membrane. Now the simplest uh, structure is the gram-positive uh, bacteria uh, cell wall uh, plasma membrane complex. This outer layer is composed of primarily the the plasma membrane as we've discussed and then a very thick uh, complex of peptidoglycans that forms the cell wall. Now peptidoglycan is a uh, complex uh, polymer of long uh, sugar chains of alternating N-acetylglycosamine uh, as well as N-acetylmuric acid uh, with short uh, uh, pentapeptide side chains cross-linked uh, between each other using peptide bonds. This gives the cell wall a, a rigid structure and it's actually fairly polar which is useful in repelling um, ions as well as unwanted protein interactions such as uh, from antibodies. So the gram-negative bacteria have a more complex uh, uh, peptidoglycan cell wall uh, cell membrane uh, complex uh, that's, uh, that's different, significantly different from the uh, gram-positive uh, bacteria. As you can see the first thing that you should notice is that the 
Um, while the plasma, uh, the cell membrane uh, acts as its uh, most base, basic or basal layer, there's a still also a peptidoglycan uh, uh, mesh over top of it. But it's a much thinner uh, peptidoglycan uh, layer than what you see in this uh, gram-positive uh, organisms. Over top of the peptidoglycan layer is then another plasma membrane, which is called the outer membrane. The space between the inner membrane and the outer membrane is called the periplasmic space, and this is where the peptidoglycan cell wall layer resides, and it inserts itself into the, and acts as an anchoring point for the, um, uh, for the outer membrane. This uh, binding of the outer layer to uh, outer membrane to the uh, peptidoglycan layer is through uh, lipoproteins. One of the unique features of gram-negative bacteria is uh, the insertion on the outer surface of the outer membrane of a substance called LPS or lipopolysaccharide. This is a three-component molecule that is composed of a lipid a core polysaccharide, and then a variable carbohydrate chain. And is important in, uh, in intensive care because the lipopolysaccharide has a lipid, the lipid component is called lipid A, which is the uh, active component of endotoxins. So provides a lot of the pathogenesis of, of gram-negative bacilli and is responsible for inciting a large component of the immune and inflammatory systems uh, within our bodies. Now beyond the cell membrane and cell wall complex, there's one more additional layer uh, that surrounds bacteria and that's the capsule. This acts as an additional protective coat uh, around the cell wall and is usually a uh, mucoid uh, polysaccharide layer that helps uh, bacteria resist phagocytosis and also makes it nice and sticky and helps it adhere to, uh, to tissues uh, and also to help it form uh, biofilms. The last two structures that are um, of importance in bacteriology are the uh, pili and the flagella. The pili is basically like a hair-like substance that inserts uh, into the peptidoglycan cell wall and serve two functions. Uh, first, they act as uh, an adhesion molecules that allow, um, allow the bacteria to attach to host cells. And this is called the uh, common pili. They are also antiphagocytic. Um, and uh, by being able to rapidly turn over their uh, antigenetic uh, profile, they can help the uh, bacteria avoid uh, a host antibody response. The other pili, uh, which is far more sexy, is the sex pili. Now these are, uh, are problematic and not nearly as fun as they sound because the sex pili are responsible for transferring DNA um, by direct conjugation. Um, between two different bacteria and allow the transfer of uh, plasmids and other genetic material. This is uh, very problematic because uh, pil sex pili are very promiscuous and sometimes can even allow for transfer of uh, plasmids uh, across uh, different species of bacteria. Um, the more concerning uh, transfers occur when plasmids are transferred that contain re uh, antibiotic resistance factors which allow essentially an entire species of organisms to pass on the information about a particular type of antibiotic to another completely different species and allow it to become resistant to the antibiotics uh, that it's being exposed to as well. Bacteria, uh, as you well can guess, uh, don't participate in any form of, uh, of meiosis uh, or sexual differentiation and then uh, sexual reproduction. All reproduction in bacteria is, is uh, asexual using binary fission. So the only way in which bacteria can, 
can acquire or change their, uh, their genetic makeup is through random mutations that occur uh, during the process of DNA replication uh, during, uh, during fission or from the acquiring um, of uh, these uh, plasmids th using uh, six pili. Now the last structure is the uh, flagella. They are similar in many respects to the pili in that they are also inserted into the peptidoglycan cell wall layer, but insert uh, uh, to a degree into the, um, into the internal uh, membrane of the uh, plasma membrane. They're much longer than pili and they actually give bacteria the ability to be uh, mobile. Fagella are actually really interesting in that they're, they already, with, in their, built into their structure, there's a uh, counterclockwise uh, flagellar uh, pit, uh, helical pitch uh, in the flagella protein. And this natural pitch, when uh, the flagella is uh, uh, rotating counterclockwise, gives the, um, uh, gives the flagella more of a, um, a rapid twisting motion that allows the bacteria to actually move uh, towards, uh, move in a single direction. This is useful when it's trying to move uh, towards a, uh, an attractant uh, or something that, it, that it's interested in, insofar as bacteria have the ability to be interested in something. But then when the flagelli rotate clockwise, the, the, the method, the, the, the way of the flagella is uh, structured then causes the flagella to actually form more of a uh, chaotic uh, wavy pattern and then that in concert with, uh, with a number of other flagella that may be present on the bacterium uh, cause it to uh, tumble instead of move in a, in a directional pathway. And so this tumbling motion allows it to uh, evade or to avoid um, something that it might be finding as uh, irritating. So in the presence of an irritant, the, uh, the, the flagella are, are cued to move in a, in a clockwise rotation to try to avoid it, um, but then, um, uh, then can rotate uh, counterclockwise to move towards something that's of interest. That's, that's really about all I want to cover in this, uh, in this section. Uh, basic bacterial anatomy is important to understand, um, particularly the structure of the cell wall, uh, cell membrane complexes. This is relevant in the way in, in which, uh, it, because it's the uh, outer layer of the bacterium, it is relevant in the way in which it interacts with the rest of the world um, and how, uh, how we react to the bacterium itself. It also contains a, a large number of important proteins, um, not just uh, lipopolysaccharides, but also another, a number of other proteins and porins that help it uh, uh, regulate its own internal environment. And in the case of antibiotics, can actually help uh, get rid of antibiotics before they can have their effect. So it's important that you appreciate the, the structures of these, these organisms and especially making sure that you understand the fundamentals of the, uh, of the uh, cell membrane, cell wall complex. In the next section, I'm going to go into more details about the identification and classification of bacteria uh, to give you an overall sense of the taxonomy uh, and the approach that microbiologists use to identifying these organisms uh, in the laboratory.